Um, hello, everybody. My name is Estella Anna Ramage. I am a senior here at SAU. I'm working towards my bachelor's in fine art as a studio art major. And I have also just recently been enrolled with um, Texas Teachers of Tomorrow, where when I'm done and I graduate, I will start to pursue a teaching certificate here in the state of Texas. Um, some of my achievements as an art student is that I have received a couple of scholarships, one from the Four States Regional Art Club and the other from the Wingate Foundation. And I also, with this painting here, um, received first place in the third annual SAU Student Art Show. I also am doing an internship and observation opportunity with the Morris of Church Middle School here in Queen City, Texas. I've been able to observe the middle school teacher and I've also gotten some teaching experience with lesson planning and classroom management. And like I said, I've just gotten a lot more experience as far as the teaching side of an art room versus a student side. Uh, before I show some of my artwork, I would like to share my influences, um, just a few of them. Um, one of them is Bob Vinichsky. He's a photographer who specializes in infrared photography. Um, in his photography, he values imagination, <clears throat> detail, composition, and creativity. And with that infrared specialty, it the imagination and creativity really does show. He also writes articles for photographylife.com. I'm also really inspired by the Impressionism art, move, uh, art movement as well as uh, Claude Monet. The history has always been really inspiring to me where that group of artists really just um, got took all that negative criticism that they got and they let it be fuel and they just really branched off to be really um, inspiring artists. Um, I also enjoy the brush strokes and the use of light and the art that was created outside of an art studio. Before I show you my work, I'd like to tell you that um, when I first started my journey as a student, I originally painted very realistically as an oil painter. And in my journey, I have um, started to use acrylic as well as watercolor. And then I've also learned the mediums of ceramic and photography. And through learning those, I have um, gained a really big passion for them as well. Uh, in my landscape series, it's an acrylic painting series that I did to allow myself to kind of break out of what I was comfortable with, with things um, feeling really realistic. And I wanted to grow artistically and create and creatively. I learned a new technique through this process. And I also, um, for the first time, used sketches that I created versus photographs that I had had um, for my references. This is the first painting of that series. Um, I really feel it's important to share because it. I kind of still went more realistic even though the composition was created from a sketch. Um, and I, it wasn't really what I was wanting to go with. So um, it helped me move more out of my comfort zone. And um, I wanted to share the process for the following paintings. I still continue to create these smaller sketches for the references. And then in creating the paintings, I used uh, layers of paint with thin, thinner paint. And that just to kind of map out where the uh, shapes and colors were gonna go. And then I went in with some thicker palette, um, like thicker paint that I applied with a palette knife. And then I, after that had dried, I went back in with the thinner paint and went around the edges of where that palette knife paint was to create those um, kind of shadows and highlights. And I felt that it gave the paintings a really um, fun and interesting texture. And here is that painting completed. Um, before I go further, I wanna share that all of these paintings in this series really kind of have a sense of um, some sort of sun or sunset in it. With this painting, we had just been sent home because of COVID and my daughter had been sent home as well. And so I got the inspiration for these trees from reading the Lorax by Dr. Seuss to her. And um, like I said, it was really uh, where I found the inspiration for these trees that I included in this landscape. 
with this landscape, I was inspired by a waterfall that my daughter and I found on a hike in Tennessee. And I also put the, the colors of the sunset in the waterfall. In my Growing Hope series, it's also acrylic painting. I wanted to showcase the idea of um, hope overcoming negative situations where I used muted backgrounds against colorful flowers to show the contrast of uh, negative and hope. And I wanted to share the message of hope overtaking a situation instead of letting negativity overtake it. This is my abuse um, painting. The rips um, represent physical, mental, and emotional abuse, and the roses represent relationships. This is my infertility and infant loss piece. I used pink and blue hydrangeas to represent baby boys and girls. And then I used a baby blanket so that way it could kind of get the feeling of um, just there not being a baby instead of a negative pregnancy test. I really wanted to um, include both infertility and infant loss. With this, this one is addiction. I chose the lotus because that flower blooms from really murky, watery situations. And in the water, I also uh, put some words of just a few things that people can find themselves struggling um, with addiction with. And that way it kind of went to more than just drug and, and alcohol. My Comfort in the Cemetery series is a photography series. I wanted to create this to share my love and respect for cemeteries that I've had since I was a little girl. My grandmother would take me and my sisters to the cemetery versus the park, um, and we would spend our days there just kind of exploring, and um, so I've always had a really big passion and love for cemeteries. I wanted to show them in a beautiful and inviting light, and I wanted to step away from that superstitious feeling of them being cold and haunting. I paid um, a lot of attention as to what time of day I was at when I was visiting the cemeteries. I spent a lot of mornings and evenings there. I also really enjoyed when the headstones and the monuments were um, close together versus spread out and individual. I liked the textures that I got from all of the trees and the leaves. And I even really liked the older monuments more then I liked the newer ones because of that texture. And with these, uh, a few of these photos, I also did a lot of work um, after I took them. And some of them, I, I used a high dynamic range um, editing where I took multiple exposures of these photos and then layered them together to produce a greater range for them. And I also played with the texture on most of, uh, well, actually all of the photos to just make that texture pop in the photos. And that's all I have to share with you today. I want to say thank you for your time. I do have an Instagram account where I have more of my art posted. And I also have an email address here to share with you all today if you ever want to get in contact with me. Again, thank you.